Yeah, I like that. Yeah. You know, it's conversational and just got to be a little more professional kind of talk. You know, leave a lot of things out like never did the Butch Box cover, you know. <laughs> you right, right, right. You don't put that into a letter to Susan Mills about the phone, you know. <laughs> that kind of thing. Just, yeah, it's fine for here, but uh, not for them. So, well, cool. do you want to know about the calendar thing first? Or? Um, well, yeah, I guess let's talk about that. We're just chatting here. Um, so, you were saying that. I guess what I'm trying to understand is if they are, I mean, is this the correlation issue between 21st and 23rd, the difference in the 21st to 23rd, some people put the end of yeah. the butt, is that what you're saying? So, so, yes, it, yes. so you're saying the glyphs that it showed for Sunday that I sent you for you said, uh, 18 sets, that that was, actually it's two days off, so it should be... There are two days behind, so it's actually two, two of the, uh, be, be, uh, the suds, right? Yeah, the bat, yeah, suds. It's not seeding of suds, but it's two suds. Hmm. And it's because they, um, they didn't, uh, they counted the leap years of 1600 and 2000. There weren't any. The, the Gregorian form is exactly the same as the Julian calendar, except the Julian meaning Julius Caesar. There's another Julian calendar, but that's something else. Mm -hmm. so the Julian Caesar calendar, say 46 BC, says every four days, every four years, add one correction day, leap year day. And your calendar is going to be good. Well, that's not quite accurate enough. Over a long period of time, you get a drift. And uh, 1582, finally, after a couple hundred years of you know saying we're going to do it, we're going to do it, we're going to do it, uh, Pope Gregory XIII finally got it pushed through. Um, at least the Catholic lands at the time, uh, there were a bunch of Protestants who didn't want to do this. The English didn't accept the reform until 1752. <laughs> uh, and others you know, held out for 50, 60, 100 years, whatever. And they held out for almost 200 years. Um, the Catholic lands, the lands, you know, going with the Pope and all, accepted, of course, right away the calendar reform. And the, the difference is uh, every 400th year, and for convenience, we're going to put it at the double zero dates. I'm going to start with 1600, and then again in 20, you know, 2000, then 24, and 28, and so on. Every 400th year, you don't have a leap year. Okay. Uh, normally, multiples of four, well, yeah. A zero, zero date would have a leap year, but um, to get the accuracy right, um, you, you don't have it. You do not have a leap year that, that day. Because the, the, uh, the leap year correction, Overcorrects over 400 years. It overcorrects about a day, very, very close to a full day. So you, so uh, you don't add that leap year, that 400th year. So uh, I, I said, well, give me the date for 29 February, which didn't exist, 1600 and 2000. It gave me a date. Did, you know, so there was no date for that for that day. That day didn't exist. Mm. So to my, you know, big shock. You know, family's supposed to be on top of these things. But. They're wrong. So would it mean that the date that we that the date that you observed on Sunday would actually be Tuesday or would it actually be Friday? They're using the we're talking about two calendars. You're, you're just talking about well, where, which way do we ratchet up this calendar, the Mayan calendar, to fit ours? And you ratchet it um, ahead two two days. It's not zero uh, subs. It's two days later. It's. Uh, so it's, it's, it's two it's sides, not, two, zero, not, sitting, not seating of sides, but two sides. Okay. So are you... It's, it's Sunday or whatever the day was. That's constant. You know, that's our day. That doesn't change. But which of theirs corresponds to us? It, it's which, which, uh, which numbered month. So from it, the, it's, two, it's two later. It's two sides, not zero The sides. calendar correlation you go with puts the ending of the Black Tomb on the 23rd of the season. Well, um... Whichever of the two really, really favored uh, correlations, uh, their mistake would do the same thing to each one of them because it, oh, it puts it, it puts in yeah there 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 is a difference and it's a complete coincidence uh, there are two correlations five eight three you know some uh, two eight four comma five eight three and five eight five and I'll tell you what that's about but uh, uh, there are two correlations uh, big uh, one of them is. Well, I think one of them is 
Edmonton had you know, Edmonton and, and uh, people at Tulane and elsewhere come down really hard, really heavy in favor of one of them over the other. But there are two, and they're, they're, they vary by two days. But that's complete coincidence as far as these two days goes. They're not at all related. You could take either one of those and um, and feed it to fans, and it would give you the same, you know it would be off by two days because they're putting in two leap days that weren't there. It has nothing to do with the complete coincidence that there is two days difference between the calendars. Uh, the correlations, the correlations. Uh, like, like say, if you gave, uh, if you did each correlation, each of them would be two days off, and still two days apart from each other. That's interesting. Just because, you know, because FAMSI, FAMSI w would take either one of them and because it adds these leap year, you know, because it adds those two leap years and they're not there, it, it's um, um, going to give you an answer that's two days off no matter what correlation you put in. But any correlation, there have been, you know, a dozen or so or 20 or something, you know, over 80 years or so, and any one of them would come off two days off because they're, fans is, by mistake, is putting in two leap years. That should not be there. And they should know better, but they, you know, I can't explain why they don't, and I don't know why they got the glyph for seeding wrong. Uh, well, I, actually, I do have an idea. I told you why. That's, but they should know that. It's I mean, exactly the same mistake. There's a, a calendar company that sells Maya calendars. And it gives a beautiful picture, usually black and white. And, you know, all our days, you know, regular calendar. But then, in, you know, inside each little square for each day, they give you the, a drawing of the Mayan, Mayan date there. The 260-day calendar date and the uh, the hop date and um, whenever they come to the seating they use the wrong glyph they use the glyph that means zero or no or none when you're counting uh, periods of time like uh, days and months and years and, and so on and so on uh, yeah th that's the zero that you use there because it means no or none but um, whenever it comes to when it comes to uh, the seeding of whatever month name, you don't use that zero, you use a uh, glyph that means seeding. Uh, now, the mistake is probably, it's got to be because of this, but they should know better. It's um, It's been a convention since, you know, umpteen years, uh, just for space and for, and for shorthand, you know, and just to look, to save space, I guess, and to, and to look a little more scientific or whatever. Uh, instead of writing out seeding of or seeding, and then the month name, you, they, they just decided for some reason, um, instead of abbreviating it, abbreviating it with some letter or symbol, they chose zero. I guess because it's the date before one, and so you start with you know, what comes before zero. Well, before one is zero, I guess, is what their thinking is. But they, they by convention, did, you know, just decided we're going we're to put zero in to, to, to designate seating of a month. And somebody has not made the connection that this zero does not mean the same thing as zero with periods of time. And so they put that. And they've done that for several years now with that calendar. <laughs> I actually wrote them a letter one time, very brief, little email, uh, and uh, I never got an answer, and they're still doing it. So. And then FAMSI, I don't know what wrong, but FAMSI's doing the same thing. Huh. They should know better. Uh, we'll do it in class, I'll mention it, but you, you know, if you've got your, when you get that little book by Co, uh, you know, look at the calendar, it'll be there. I, I checked it out the night before last. And uh, you know, yeah, it's what I knew, and he's, you know, he's just saying what Thompson was who figured out and did a long time ago. But uh, yeah, by convention we call it zero, but it means seating, and it's not the same thing as the other zero. Two very distinct glyphs there. Mm. Wow. Anyhow, that's all right, yeah. there's, there's, the there's the trivia there. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to get a better grasp on that just to know. Well, uh, well, I can explain, you know, if you want to now or later. They have those two correlations mm -hmm. and why they're, uh, well, what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. you know, why, uh, I don't want to go into details of why they're two days apart and which one's better, but I can tell you, where, you know, what that big number means. Or, you know, why is this um, two days different, but two days from where and what or what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll get all that. Whenever you want to do that. Yeah, we'll probably, we'll probably, we'll probably, we'll probably rehab, have this conversation again with the, the actual glyphs in front of us, so you can like okay. explain and show them. But that's fine. Yeah, you know, you note that. You can note that. Yeah.
That's cool. Yeah, we're live and direct, coming to you from Spirit Oh, Wings. good God, you're already on? This is all been on tape? <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, I've okay. recorded. Yeah. But actually, I think I'll stop it before we do the paper. <laughs> Here it looks okay. Well, we're live and direct oh. again. It's Asher and Professor <laughs> Robin Lamb. This is, uh, we're trying to wrap up my independent study that I've been working on here, and he's about to get the feedback on my paper and figure out what we got to do to clean it up and give it a more professional posturing to get to the professionals. Right. So. Okay. We'll just pretend it's not fair. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. They're real actors. Like real actors. Yeah, oh, yeah, yes. You, you, yes, be yes. The, you play the role of a professor, and I'll, I'll play, play the role of a professor. Student. I'll pretend I have a PhD. Stuff like that. Okay. <laughs> Can't quote me in anything. So, just, yes. Okay. Well, I'm not going to worry about getting it um, ready for professionals. We can do that another time. But, I mean, as far as uh, you know, the language and, and, and the attitude and so on, mm -hmm. nothing big. You just got to. Just take some of that out there. Some of it's got to be taken out. They're, they're not, they're not, yeah, yeah, they want more academies and less personal and all that, so. That's fine. Okay. I can do it. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, let's take a look at some of the, well, some of the trivial stuff and then some of the important stuff as well. Um, you know, like, okay, for whatever it means of 2012, you know, it makes no sense. Uh, I think the word is for. Oh, okay. For whatever it means, okay. Uh, Okay, there's sometimes you leave a word out and it's really clear what it should be, but it's just not quite there. <laughs> right. Uh, this does not mean the basic premise should be dismissed entirely and indiscriminately. Okay, I think I know what you mean, without thinking about it. Okay. Yeah, okay. Without discriminating on what's... Oh, well, discriminating means like... Uh, indiscriminately means like, well, I didn't even think about it. It's just, oh, it's, it's a, it has Jenkins' name on it, so it can't be any exactly, good. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, that, that would have that worked. That's, that's correct, yeah. That, that's still okay. Uh, to start it, okay, to this, this is a strange phrase. If there's plenty of reasonable evidence to speculate, to speculate the possibility, that isn't quite right. To speculate about or on the possibility, or yeah. to support or to argue or defend the possibility. To make the case. Yeah, along those lines. Gotcha. Let's just get to the more important stuff. Uh, Uh, the really important one um, is, for me at the moment is number two, did the Maya have knowledge of precession? And even more important, uh, the rate, you know, you know which rate. Uh, I'm pretty um, reluctant to say that they didn't know precession. I, I, you could present that correctly, I believe. Uh, but it's, it's the rate of precession which is uh, crucial to linking. Um, the end of the Bakhtun on the winter solstice, right where you guys say it's going to happen, mm -hmm. or where, where it is happening, okay, where mm -hmm. it will happen. Um, I, I don't know any source of information yet that we can say, says, yeah, they knew it accurately enough to say that within a 30-year period, uh, that's where it's going to happen. I think he said it's a 15-year period, yeah. actually. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a 30-year period. Um, did you but, catch uh, the I, I never, it's like, you know, uh, way back, it was what, about 180 B.C., was it? Hipparchus, Hipparchus, uh, discovered precession, and there were probably people centuries before him in uh, Babylonia and so on who, who also discovered it. And I don't know if any of those cultures, uh, earlier ones, have records, have scholars figured out from the ancient writings that, okay, their rate was about this. Um, uh, I think Hipparchus... Hundred. Said about a hundred years, which is way off by about thirty percent. Um, we're thinking now seventy-two years, or is it? I've seen I've seen seventy-one point six, which means a couple hundred days, not a couple hundred, see point, uh, you know, four tenths uh, of a year is almost half a year. So we'll say maybe one hundred fifty, sixty days difference there. Um, and uh, the big point being a very small error between seventy-two and seventy-one point six, or, or, or whatever. Uh, let alone 100 years versus 70 years or 72 years, is going to make a huge difference in where they would have been able to calculate that would, that would fall when it comes to the stories, story background. I mean, they would have, I don't know where it would be, it would be, would be nowhere near where it's going to happen. 
So the question is, do we have any good evidence, and I think we do not, that uh, they had a really accurate knowledge of the uh, real, true rate of precession. I, I, I bet you they knew precession, but I don't think we have any evidence that they knew it that well. What about even even about even how well did they know it? I don't think we could even say that. Uh, beyond well, like like the naked eye uh, guy uh, Hipparchus and others, who you know, had the same non you know absence of tools to work with, no telescopes. Uh, they probably didn't do much better than he did, uh, unless. And this is what I, I don't know. What does it take to get the accuracy we have today? Do you have to have a telescope or optimal viewing conditions over a long period of time? Or what? I don't know what it takes to get that high accuracy. Um, if it's just a visual thing, then it might be possible. But even then, the question is what rate did they finally come up with? And it had to be really, really good to get it to happen where it's going to happen. Because you're talking about. About 2,000 plus years in advance, saying where it's going to happen in the sky exactly within a 15 year or so uh, period. So it's got to be really good. And I just don't know. You, you mentioned in the paper some. Yeah, Barbara McLeod has noticed uh, what a period. And I, I have to look that up. Yeah, I just read. Uh, that's what I, I read you tell me about that. Tell, what, what, what does that mean? Is it, uh, it was what was it? Uh, Something that added up to 71 or something like that? Uh -huh. Yeah, it says... Uh, 11, uh, 311 or 113 or something like that? <clears throat> Some uh, glyphs were in, just in Palenque or they show up in a lot of other places or what? Uh, I'm not quite sure. It? It's, it's one little symbol? Oh, sure, it is. Uh, what page is that on? It's on, All right. I, I, it's on I, this one. Uh, where is it? It says even more interesting. Okay. Yeah. I have to look at what he is. Uh, I have to see what what she means, because that would be uh, wow. It's, uh, what I'll do is I'll there go. it is. Okay, yeah. uh, okay. She he presents it. Who's this? Uh, Who, Van Stone. Oh, Mr. Van Stone is saying a new theory by Barbara McLeod. Been working with an unusual Maya concept, a significant interval of time they call three eleven pick which happens to co coordinate numerically with the rate of precession, the three being uh, uh, katuns, the 11 being uh, tuns, I guess, and that would be, and the word is pick, of course. Uh, pick, uh, I guess, is being used as a general um, uh, symbol for cycle or period of time, and then you know by context, I suppose, what the numbers, what units the numbers refer to. And it, it, if it's three cartoons and 11 tons, well, then you'd have 71 tons, which would be pretty close, uh, depending which value you choose. Um, Stone says, not only did they, know, did they know, not only did the Maya occasion, occasionally celebrate the procession, they observed and measured its progress sufficiently to calculate with it. Um, I guess he's accepting this as... He uh, is. That's what's amazing. He's saying, he's saying 311 is their reference to... Uh, the rate of procession. To the rate of procession, which is pretty close to what we've got. And then here's another one. Van Stone tells us that Anthony Avini does not agree with it. I'm saying it's coincidental. <laughs> and, and, uh, okay, I'd like to know why he dismisses it. It's pure coincidence. I guess what we, I'd have to read that. Yeah. That would be really fascinating. Uh, again, I'm not surprised that they knew some, you know, knew, uh, knew what that procession takes place, and uh, anything, you know, 100 years or less would, would not surprise me either. But that close would surprise me. Yeah. You know what? What I'm gonna do we're talking is about a couple of months here. When I get home, I'll go on the FAMSI website and mm -hmm. I, I printed that whole thing out. And yeah. I'll find out what page it is and what section, and I'll send yeah, you the I, link and the page number. And you got to write. You to told it. me. Uh, about pictures. it, and I, I located it, and I just got it. It takes forever to download. Doesn't it take like a couple of hours to download? To download it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, I wanted to download it. You know, get my get, get a copy of it on my oh, on your computer, and it said you know to download will take about three hours, and that's just part one. There are what two, three, four parts. Yeah, I just opened. It anyway, I'll, I'll 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 manage to. Uh, you should be able to open it. To get and go it going. Right to the page number. You should be able to open it and then go right to the page number without downloading it. Yeah, that I can do. I can look up, just put in 311 pick yeah, or whatever. You can just print out that one page, you know, that's two pages. Yeah.
Yeah, I will do. I'll do that, and then I'll look at the. Uh, I mean, Van Stone. Is, I think he's pretty. I don't know about him, but I bet you he's pretty good at glyph to where he's considered. You know, okay, what's the occasion and what what's the context, and it could apply to that. So that would be exciting. Yeah, I actually know about that. I mean, I'm gonna put that in class when we do the astronomy part. I'm gonna put that in there. Cool. Because, uh, you know, unless it's really obviously a big mistake, which I don't think it is. It's probably pretty. Uh, what's it? Pretty interesting. Why Avini? Well, you know, my, my, that's why you know, Avini is pretty, you know, pretty um, um, smart and aware, and uh, to where, well, if he says no, you got to think of, you know, you got to see why he yeah, says you no. You got to consider, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. What does he say that makes him dismiss it, and do we take, do we, do we accept that or not? You just can't. Even Avini, you know, in general, rule is just because somebody of great intelligence and authority says so, it doesn't mean it's necessarily so. Uh, usually, yeah, but not always. We made that mistake for about 30, 40 years with uh, Thompson and his decrees on the glyphs, and he held uh, decipherment back for about 30 years because he didn't believe it. Nobody else dared say anything about it. And if somebody peeped about it, uh, not being the way he said it was, uh, he tore them to shreds in, in publication. So we don't want to have that again. <laughs> we want to be able to challenge people no matter what your stature is. Anyway, yeah. Okay. Cool. So that's yeah, we'll that's follow. a really we're interesting gonna, question. We're gonna go deeper question. into that because I wonder if even even if that's correct. Yeah, we got this three eleven pick. It refers to the rate of uh, uh, precession. The next question would be okay. What does that rate work out to over how many about two thousand or so years? And where does that put this happening? Does it put it where we, we where we want it to be, or does it put it you know pretty far off where you go? Oh, that's too bad. You know, that, that part they got wrong. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we, you said like. And think about this though. When you said 7.16 over that amount of time, 71.6, yes. It, it, it that that port four difference comes up to about a, a year and a half. You said or something. Oh uh, like no, no. Let me see. 150 days. Actually. Let me see. Uh, well, 0.4 of 365 is 20, 24, 26, 60, uh, and 12. To 146, yeah. 146, 146 days. days, yeah. Okay, well, remember that is the processional rate, not the year value. They had to have the year value exact to end the Bach 2 minus solstice. Yeah, so I, I know they're different rates. That's the. We're done. just uh, saying. But within a 30 year period, that 150 days isn't nothing. I think you better look at that. Look at that, because <laughs> over two thousand years, being one hundred and fifty days off. But it's not one hundred and fifty days off a, a year. And that's a. No, uh, well, when you're talking about the rate of precession, yeah. um, they're a day, they're one hundred and forty days off every seventy years. So how many times? You know, you're talking about twenty. We're talking about twenty-one hundred years at least. Seventy into that is uh, thirty. And 30 times 146, that's a lot of days there. 16. Which means they're going to put it a uh, degree or two degrees. They're going to be off right, a degree see. or two or three, which is, you know, each so degree is two moon widths. And that's, you know, one moon, one moon width is going to take it out of, uh, out of the, uh, the split in Shibal Bay, right? So that's a major part. If you have to have them co you know, coincide and... Uh, It would be real. I guess the question is, how accurate do they have to be to get it to get it there? We're talking about where among the stars the sun would rise on that uh, winter solstice. So, okay, 2000, uh, so let's say let's see seven. We'll say 72 years. Well, you got to get it down, get it down today. You know, put it down to days and everything. Yeah. Be accurate about it as much as you can. Um, and uh, okay, when she, when, uh, whoever, the, uh, Mark Van Stone and Barb McLeod, are they talking about Hobbes or Tuns? Not 360 or 365, because uh, 72. Uh, you know, of, of, you know, that's, that's a many days difference there. Uh, I don't know exactly which one. Back to what value are they subscribing, and then what's the real value, and what's the difference, and then over 2,300 years, seventy-one. And how far off they going to be, you know? I'll bet you put it outside Chibalba, I bet you does. 71.6 years. 
Uh, uh, I read 20, that somewhere. 2100 20, 20, years divided by... Well, it's number. probably even more than that. I don't know what date are we talking about. Sure. When they when they set up the calendar and yeah. uh, what, 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 Edmondson put the date in coming out here and, and I don't forget when it was. 433 BC or 344 BC or something, you know, that you're talking, you know, 2300 years or 2400 years. Yeah, it just makes it even worse. You know? Any little error gets real big over long periods of time. Now that's if you want to insist that that sunrise takes place at that point in the sky in Shibalba's fork or entrance on the winter solstice. You know, if you're going to say that, that's an extraordinary claim. You need to have extraordinary uh, proof for it, not just um, it's a completely different issue from uh, the value of the year and getting it right on uh, the winter solstice. Uh, it's a whole different thing. Got me real interested in trying to figure it out. Now. Well, the problem is to find somebody who tells you really precisely what the what the procession is. You know, I I can't tell you where I read 71.6. Probably Vini or Krupp, or maybe John Carlson. But you should be able to find it. I'm still just trying to figure. I'm just trying to, uh, I'm, I'm just looking for a, a round. Not an exact, but just a round number, just to see what the what the possibilities are. Like, I'm trying to see. Oh well, we'll go with seventy one point six. I know okay, that's the that. value uh, from some scientific yeah. source. Okay, seventy one point six. So I'll multiply so. three six five times point four, and it right. gives you one hundred forty six days off. Oh, I see. What you're doing. Okay. Right. So they're saying uh, it moves one degree. Uh, so and, then, and then you got to okay, and again, then you have. Uh, um, okay, 71.6 years. Well, how many days does that come to? Uh, you may not, wait, wait, slow you may not have to worry about it. You used to do fast, man. Okay. Slow down. Okay, so 146 days. Yeah. Now that's, that is... Short of 72 years. Short, oh, oh, okay. okay 72 so, years. Okay, let's figure out what that is. Then. So uh, 72 and don't years. don't forget, don't forget, don't five. forget the, you know, what's the, what's the real value of the year? Not time 365 or 365.25, it's... Point two four something. I, it's not quite twenty five because you have that Gregorian correction. And I don't know the year. Twenty six two nine seven point two eight. That's figuring it out at uh, three sixty five point two four. Okay, so at three hundred sixty five point two four, it's twenty six thousand. Twenty six thousand. Yeah, we, there'll be a little bit of uh, 297. What did I just do? I'm so confused now. Okay, what did I just do? So I, took, I got 146 short of well, 26 days. Okay. Short of three of. Oh, oh wait, 146 days short of. 72 uh, times 365.25. Yeah, 71.6 times Or three something else if you want to go something like that. 5.24. Like, uh, yeah. If you want to go with a more accurate figure of the year, it's 24.24. Yeah, point uh, 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 uh. I don't know the, uh, I don't know the exact uh, three or four point pl place value of the year. It's a 365.24 something. 2426? Does somebody have that? Really? I'm, I'm not sure. So that so okay. So seventy one point six times three hundred sixty five point two four is twenty six thousand one hundred and fifty one point eighteen days. Okay. All right. Okay, so okay, that's okay, that's and so every that many days. Yes. Is that many Yeah, uh, it moves one degree. Okay. It moves one degree. Right. Okay. So so, um, the question, so is, the question is, what value do they say the Maya had? Well, let me see this. Let's see this. If we yeah, take you, you, have, you have to know what, you know, it, it, it gives us that, uh, that, that 311. Uh, well, what value do they assign to that 311 uh, glyph? Times 30. Are they talking about uh, 70, 
It's 71, but is it 71 tun or 71 hob? And well, either one's going to be uh, a good deal different, a good deal different than this. Let's see, uh, 146. I mean, you could say to give him the benefit of the doubt, you could take that, say it's hob at 365. 71 times okay. 365 is what? Now let me just tell you what I just came with. And you tell me if this is wrong or right. What I did was I took 71.6 years times 365.24 just to see how many days okay. makes up 71.6 years. We came to 26,151.18. Okay. I just used a round figure, 30, multiply. 30? Yeah, 71.6 times 30 is 20, just over 2,100 years. Right? Okay. So just a round number. So 30 cycles of 71.6 years or 26,000 right. sudden days, sure. 78, okay. 784,535 days, okay, well, divide that by 365, divide by 365, yeah, okay. oh no, well, we no, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, no, 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 what I did was then was, the, I multiplied 146, 146 days, that's the difference, every, every, every 72 years, or every 71.6 yeah. uh, is 146 well, days off. So multiply that, 30 well, cycles, 30 cycles of 146 days right. is, comes to about 12 years. 12 years? Mm -hmm. Which puts us, ouch, within, the, well, 12 years, that's within 15 years. Uh, thing is, that that's, um, doesn't got all, doesn't have, doesn't have all the information we need. Yeah, it's not exact, but it is we're, close. We're, for round, well, for round I think numbers, when, when you, like when you go back to, you know, 2100, the calendar was way before 2100 when they True. set that calendar, so that's going to make a difference. Well, uh, number two is um, we're talking about the difference between 72, um, what, 72 times 365 versus 71.6 times 365.24 or something like that. What we have to do is we have to get, we have to know what. Let's assume 71.6 is is the correct scientific astronomical value, okay. and we can convert that to days. Uh, the difference is 146 days. Um, the, the question is, what value do they assign to that 311 pick compound? Uh, we can give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's say the pick compound means 71 times 365. The benefit of that is 365 is as close as they're going to get with a single whiff. Uh, and, you know, their time period, um, we, we, we know they had a calendar of 365 days. And we have evidence that they knew about the, about the year's value being um, uh, 365.25. But uh, we're not sure if they applied that value to this glyph. The fun thing would be, uh, we can, let's do that right now. Let's take, uh, take 71 times 365.24. 25, 25. Let's assume that they had the 25 value uh, that they use, I think, at least in Palenque. Mm -hmm. So 71 to, to, uh, times 365.4. There, there, there Point two, no, point two five. Point two five. Right? Yeah, the Julian calendar, the Julius Caesar calendar of value. Seventy-one years of three sixty-five point okay. two five days. Right now, like an equation equals twenty-five thousand nine hundred thirty-two days. Point seventy-five. Okay, what's the difference between um, the Maya seventy-one and the Astronomical, I guess. Astronomical, seventy-one point six. So we had a so seventy-one point six years of three hundred and sixty-five. What? Point two four. Two four. La di la di la. Okay. We'll leave it at two four. But it's, it's a little closer than that. Twenty-six thousand one hundred fifty-one days. Compare okay. that to okay. 71 of times. So, it's going to be fairly. Well, no. 
Seventy-one point six. Difference it'll be, it'll of be, it'll be fairly close. Two hundred eighteen. Four hundred thirty-four. Four hundred. Two hundred eighteen point four three. Two hundred eighteen days. Mm -hmm. Okay. So two hundred eighteen days. Two hundred eighteen days. Okay. So now we. And that's to every seventy years. And so let's say. Uh, well, let's. Where are we gonna put the calendar? Twenty-one hundred is is nice and easy around thirty-three. But let's say, uh, really that it's. Uh, I just don't know where, let's say, I think it's around 2300. So let's say 2300 divided by 70, what does that come down to? Or 71, 2300. Twenty-three. Let's just say uh, 2300 divided by the astronomical value of, uh, divided by 71.6. Okay. So how many cycles are we talking about? 32.12. 32.12. So now that's, we need to multiply. That's saying something like the calendar was uh, in place about 300 BC. 218. Okay, and now we multiply. Okay, so it'll, the difference will happen 32 times. So th let's say 33. Nice round number. 33 okay. times the difference of 218 point whatever. Uh, how many days that, does that add up to? Seven two hundred one ten and five. Seven thousand three hundred and twenty. Two hundred and ten. Seven thousand two hundred and ten days over twenty three hundred years. Twenty three hundred. Uh, divide that. Well. By three sixty five. Uh, divide by three sixty five. You're gonna get almost eighteen years long. Something like that. Yep. Which ain't too bad if you're doing fifteen. If you get more racket and the further back you go, the more times you're going to get 146 days and the, further, the bigger this value is going to get. Mm -hmm. It might be like, uh, What's so fascinating? Uh, 18, I think it's, let me think how that might. What's so fascinating is that really, it's, that's, uh. But what does that, uh, let's get a, uh, what does that last figure mean? Uh, what did you get, you got, uh, the difference over all that time was 7,210 days. Maybe probably a bit more because the calendar's about further back, probably. Uh, let's say that's it. What's the difference? Uh, what does that mean for the naked eye seeing things? Um, how big? Uh, how big is? Uh, how many days does this equal? Twenty-six thousand is uh, one degree. What is seven, okay. Seventy-one point six years is twenty-six thousand. This is only seven thousand. Okay. Um, in other words, to be one degree off would have to be 26,000 days difference. And one degree is two moon or sun diameters. Mm -hmm. Each one of them is half a degree. Mm -hmm. So 7,000 versus 26,000, let's say maybe even 28,000. Uh, if you go further back a little bit, maybe. Uh, you're going to have a quarter of a degree, which is half of a moon or half of a sun. Uh, that might get it close enough, on it? After all. And that also, if if it, if it's a, if it's accurate, that might put us at like trying to figure out when the calendar was actually put in place. That would be interesting. You could work it the Ooh. other way around and assume that they wanted it to drop in there, and then work back and see, you know, through percent. The, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of really complicated astronomy involved in, uh, in supporting the uh, correlation we have. To where I wouldn't bet that you can win that one, but uh, you. It may not be even a concern. If you're getting within half a half a moon or sun diameter, you're putting naked. You're putting naked out. In 23, 23 or 2400 years, damn, that's pretty good. <laughs> and that would be. Um, could you see that? You could see that. Uh, but that's like optimal conditions. I don't think it would be telescope conditions. But um, damn, yeah, when you come down to. I mean, that's the knowledge of this, you know, 20, over 23, 2400 years, you know, it's like, that's pretty good. I, I, I would think, you know, wow, that's not bad. <laughs> you know, maybe we just uh, cut, cut them a little slack and say, okay. And then, of course, the question is, and this would be, is, is, is like impossible to, to say, how big is the frame that we want, you know, of uh, Shibalba? 
you know, okay, it's, it's going to fall right in the center, or can you give it a little leeway? You like is the, how big is the is the fork? Yeah, the way it comes out. Uh, how, yeah. how how wide is the fork, and exactly where do they want it? Did it have to be in the center, or could it be anywhere in there? And we how, don't, how we don't wide know exactly is it? What was is it point. is it you know is it a half a moon or half a sun diameter? Mm -hmm. Is it one radius of the sun or moon? Mm -hmm. um, you know, wide or wider? Mm -hmm. So that's another good thing. Go home and find out how wide the the jaws are, or whatever the fork is. Mm -hmm. and, you know, if it's more than half a degree, it's a de if it's a degree wide, well. This, it could have fit in there. Wow. You know, well, you know, pretty close. You'd be going, you'd be entering it or leaving it. You'd be probably just barely entering it. They're, they're going to be, they're going to be off and behind. So they're going to be coming in a little bit, a little bit late. But they'll have like, well, how wide is it, and, and could it fit? It may not be exactly the center, but it's still in there. And hey, that's not too bad for 2,400 years and no telescope. <laughs> anyway, these are all pretty rough figures, but uh, it'll probably come down to about that same margin. Check it out. Yeah. That would be fun. That would be yeah. something to write It's about. becoming fun. I'm I, surprised Jenkins hasn't played around with that yet. I'm, uh... You, know, you think he's up against the wall. Why does he do something like this with it? Huh? Well, I mean, I've been talking to you now for two years. Next Two years next month. I met you in July of... Is it that long? July of wow. 2007. Really we moved know. out I, here. I didn't know. Okay. So, so I, I kind of feel like I've... I've at, le at the very least, yeah, I've made the work relevant to you. I've made this inquiry. Oh, I should have given some relevance to this. I just don't have the time to sit down and read his stuff. His stuff is, it's a lot of it. And, and which is the very best one? I guess the very latest one is the best one. It sums it all up and, and gives the best arguments for things. Which one is it? What my paper, you mean? His. Book. Oh, you're um, saying like I'm, I'm. I'm not. You know, I'm not believing him. Uh, I. I don't know exactly what he says that ticks off other people, mm -hmm. but I'm just. Which is maybe a good thing because. I just I don't know if you hear what he says, what you tell me he says, and we work on it, and this is what we're getting, this kind of thing. Yeah. I, I have no idea. I don't believe in um, this. Uh, um, the the event uh, is going to cause some transformation of people's consciousness or attitudes or anything like that. Um, it's nothing, as far as I'm concerned, different than uh, the millennial mindset where oh. It's, 2000, so somehow we're going to transform everything in 2000, or it's wishful thinking that, like every New Year's, and here, of course, every millennium, oh, you know, here's a chance to really improve and make resolutions and try to be better. And, uh, I just don't see what's going to, I, I, I can't see any scientific backing for this um, coincidence, this event, uh, uh, by nature unrelated, that, okay, they, you know, they had this great calendar and they figured out where it's going to happen. And it just happened to be where they think is the entrance to the underworld is, some of them anyway, that this is going to mean there's going to, you know, and it's the galactic center, which they couldn't possibly know, I imagine, that this is going to mean something. That's going to transform people thinking. I, I just can't see that happening. No. Right, you know, I'm going to tell you something. I, I, I'm going to have to bring this up because I was reading Genius recently. Uh, this whole paper, I almost fumbled because I got sidetracked into Jenkins' book again. And his work, Cosmogenesis, is really... It's really thick. There is, like, you've seen the bibliography. I remember you looking through the bibliography and was really impressed with the bibliography. Yeah, he's, it's, if I remember right, yeah. He, it, it's really he's thick. He's read a hell of a lot of stuff. I, read so, like, it's not a, I just read a recent chapter that I'd actually never read in its entirety. Oh, yeah? And it is very, very fascinating. It is, it, it, he actually looks at a contemporary a myth. Um, have you heard this? In, in, oh, this is what's crazy. In the last interview, we got evidence I was telling you about <laughs> the dream that I had. We were talking about dreams, right? And yeah. Shamanism and all this. Yep. And I had the dream about the guy getting ate by a crocodile. Right. Or I had the dream that the guy, he was, yeah. right. I went home that night and I started looking in my cosmos and he has a whole chapter that's called The Man That Was Ate By the Alligator. The Man That Was Ate, or The Man That Was Ate By the Crocodile. And it's really? a story, it's a Mayan story. Man was eaten by a crocodile. It's from Chamayul or somewhere. It's, a, it's some Mayan village. There's a, a documented story that huh. goes back to like I don't know if it's Leon Portilla. Who who who? I'm trying to remember who documented this story. It's all there. I have to get you the, the links. But he takes this story and he he analyzes it and puts it into context of being an abbreviated and stylized version of the Popo Vu with like different sim symbology and stuff and it okay. is really 
really, really interesting. It's really, really interesting. I'd like to see that, yeah. And um, one of the other things he talks about, which I never noticed in his, his theory that they knew the Galactic Center or the reason it was such an important focal point, he talks about um, the, the uh, like what NASA picks up right now is like the radiation, like the, the radio waves. Yeah. They come out of it, yeah. and he just basically he tries to make a case that these shaman, these divine or priests, kings, mm -hmm. were doing nothing. They were staring at the sky every night. Not only that, but they were also delving into hallucinogenics and mind altering substance that completely changes our sensory perception. It enables our minds. They were able to pick up the x-rays? They, they, were, they were actually, whatever. that because that I mean, I'm sorry, but I've, 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 I've experienced looking into the night sky on both mushrooms and LSD and, oh, okay. and have experienced, and, and I, I've been able to observe radio, like energy in, in environments, in situations in general. And it's not like I was raised to watch the night, stop, the night sky no, every no, night, you know no, what I'm saying? Okay. I can just imagine these shamans without the city lights Clear, beautiful night yeah. skies, well, what, hallucinating, and their minds going through where they could, they could actually would pick up just the fact that it's like what he calls it is the uh, the ek, you know the the ek, uh, black um, the black center or whatever that she no, talks uh, so much about. He, uh, he not. It, there's a story or there's something that he associates with a nighttime sun, a sun in the night, and that this focal point because of the brilliance of the Milky Way itself. And then just this focal point being not only like it stands out from the Milky Way band itself, mm -hmm. but it actually being, you know, just like he called he called it like a nighttime sun, where in in hmm. in in, in, a, in a untainted environment observing these night nice skies and also using sensory stimulating substances, that it's going to look like a burning sun in the sky almost hmm. to, the, to the very keen and sensitive eye to pick up. Well, to the, the the drug guy, you're picking up. What is it? X-rays? The what? You're picking up X-rays. You're saying maybe yeah. drugs uh, stimulate or change, waves, change yeah. perceptions where you pick up radio waves with your eyes. I'm, yeah. I'm not sure. It's. I have no idea. I mean, okay, that's a. Uh, well, maybe you maybe hear, it's possible. I've been I, able to hear. You can hear frequencies, high pitch frequencies that you don't normally hear. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm, I'm sure it does something to you, and that that would be a whole another other question. It would be uh, a fascinating possibility. You know, what drugs exactly did they use, and what quantities and frequencies, and what effects would it have on most people? Um, and you know, would they, you know, see the sky? Okay, and, the, and it's all different colors according to different, uh, yeah. or what? You know, what is it? Different colors according to different radio waves, uh, or, or what? Or is it just different colors, but they're not picking up really anything different, essentially? Or would that um, Shivalba center, you know, really stand out as a bright or different uh, compared to everything else in yeah. the sky there? I mean, are there other? Radio wave sources that would I mean, they might, it or they might have never, they might not be they could be looking at this and be like you know it's not like they 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 have the telescope section okay that's the shape of the Milky Way you know this that, <coughs> yeah, yeah. but there's like a lot of energy coming out of that spot it's like a burning skin in the okay, night sky okay, when okay. your minds are right and you can see, just see where it becomes a really the whole important question is, is, is the whole question is you know is that what really happens any any known world. drugs do to you I mean any any drugs that we have any reasonable, uh, any reason to believe that the Maya used back then, or whoever made the calendar and all this and put it all together, uh, what drugs were they using and uh, you know, what strengths and so on, uh, you know, what would it do to you at different levels? You know, would it make people see radio waves or energy centers or whatever you want to call them? Enable them. And, and then, okay, let's say, the well, it could do this and this and you could see things. Well, then the next thing, and I guess we can do this now? If we know what they can see, you know, can we recreate it and see, okay, wow, there's a whole bunch of centers out there, and who would know which one they would choose, and, and something's brighter than the Shivalva one, or does the Shivalva one really stand out above all others, and I guess that's what he's saying? Well, I think that's, what, I think that's, what, that's, that's, even, that's what he's trying to make an argument, that even from NASA, like, that's what, you know, that this, this it being the closest central point of our galaxy. You know what I'm saying? So not that those, not that other black holes and other 
centers of like the Cassiopeia galaxy. There's all you know the, no, the it's Cassiopeia our galaxy cluster. Center. It's, it's our okay. galaxy. It's and like it's the closest sun so, to us. So it is the it, it is real bright beyond anything. It would else be. Out there. It would naturally be putting okay. off more radio frequencies and more energy. Uh, the question would, than would be, you know, can, can we? I mean, it, 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 there's a logic to it, but the question, the real question is, do any drugs do that to you? I mean, in, to, it, to where you are somehow aware of that part in the sky being a whole bunch different, and I guess bright in some plane than, than anything else. Yeah. Uh, that's the real question, do drugs do it? Do some drugs do that to you? And I, I don't know, what, what did you see I believe, when you were I believe looking so. at the sky? I've, I've experienced unbelievable well, things. Well, what did you see though? I mean, I've just, I mean, I can't. Did you see a I wasn't, real bright you, spot in the no, sky? No, because I wasn't studying this stuff like that. You know okay. what I'm saying? I wasn't like thinking like that. But what no, I'm but saying is, I've see? just seen all kind, I've seen just unreal, you know, I've seen somebody, I've seen somebody walk across a room and then see them do it five more times, but they've actually already left the room. Like I've actually okay. got stuck in, t in in like sections of time where yeah, well, like you're, like, okay, like it's reprocessing, it's yeah. reprocessing, <laughs> and I'm not even seeing the person go through the door. I'm just seeing this like like this trailer of image, and you know the whole thing with trailers is you know when you when I go like this with my hand, mm -hmm. if your eyes if you're perceptive, you can kind of see the the motion of my hand. Oh, like like a camera, yeah, like a movie camera. Exactly, it slows it down. Slows, yeah, it slows it down. Okay. You see what I'm saying? That's, well, I can see that, but. Well, that's such the question. What would you see in the sky? Mm -hmm. and can we and, yeah. know what drugs would cause what effects, and is that what happened? There's a also man. He brings up a. a I, I found this other Lincoln Jenkins. Um, he sent me back to uh, Dennis T. Locks, uh the trend, the Popa Vu, in the Popa Vu. Oh yeah, to Ted Locks version of it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There's this amazing thing um, where he talks about. This, this uh, thunder, the birth of thunder, like the, at the in the beginning of the creation story, there's this like uh, this thing with thunder and this other character in the Pulp of Vuk. There are several thunders. I think. And if you go to the footnotes, oh. yeah, of it's all he's Ted talking Lock, about. Ted Lock talks Ted about what? All these very varieties of hallucinogenic mushrooms and this the debate around which ones are being used and the symbolism of them actually being in. The Pope of Luke. Okay. And it's really interesting. But I never the, knew that was there. Is it related to astronomy or? No, it just, it's specific. It's just, well, actually, I'm trying to think what it has to do. It has something to do with with uh, like the character of Thunder or something. Man. I, I need to get back on yeah. that. See, all that stuff was uh, is all new notes that I, okay. I was I was trying to put into this, but I figured, man. There's I only just, so much room. There's no. only so much room. <laughs> I, need, I want to deal specifically with this and then that next semester just keep building it. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, okay, get back to the paper here. Okay, sure. <laughs> um, I'm going to give you my marked up copy of it, and you can just see, you know, the spelling mistakes or the words that are left out or repeated or whatever. That's okay. I used talking about each of those. Okay, and yeah, my main yeah. uh, point of interest is what we did here. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, now it's up to you to follow up on that and get back to me. Uh, sure. You know, can we? How wide is that space? You know, where exactly, according to Jenkins or whoever. Do they want to see the sunrise on the winter solstice 2012? 2012? Um, and how much, how big is that space in terms of degrees or, or half degrees, uh, minutes, I guess you call it. Um, and then Edmondson, when did the calendar start? How many years have you got? We'll do that whole calculation and you'll probably. No, at the worst, you'd come up to maybe half a degree, which is one radius. Which is, well, does it fit in there still? That's, that's a major question. Is it, does it fit in that space? And then if it does, woo, well, okay, what does that tell us? But that would be major, I think that would be pretty useful, a uh, pretty interesting find. For people. Um, and of course, the problem is, this is all assuming, you know, like what the problem is with... Uh, Mayan astronomy in the lowlands, the southern lowlands, meaning you know northern Guatemala and you know, the rainforests of, of you know, that involve uh, uh, Tikal and Palenque and all these other sites, and then of course it's a different environment up there in the mountains of Guatemala where Caminal who you use, which is where supposedly it says Edmondson the calendar originated, or the first record of the Long Count, uh, somewhere three or four hundred B.C. The real, the real length. 
hour accuracy of the solar year. Would that be, I guess we're, we're having to say, well, if they're trying to get the sunrise to happen in that Shibalaba fork, and that's a, that, that is the area, the, the climate, well, the altitude and the air, the sky conditions that you have to think of. Uh, that long, you know, 23, 24 years ago, what, uh, at that altitude, what were, you know, what were the sea, what were the visibility? Uh, how accuracy could they see stars? Could they see them the moment they come up over the horizon, or is the atmosphere sort of dense and so it comes up a little bit later? And, and would that at all affect? Would that affect their calculations or not? There's a, there's a thing called uh, the the arcus visionis, which means how much of a little arc are we losing above the horizon until they come into view? Um, that might affect their you know well, understanding of you know, oh well when do they how they how accurately are they doing procession? But, uh, and maybe I'm not sure it affects it a lot or a whole lot or nothing at all. I'm not really sure. Um, but that, that would be something to take into account. Uh, I guess it would be common that whole you or that area, which I presume is, I presume it's, you know, it's higher and so it's clearer, clearer viewing, but I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, let me see if I got something else written down that's worth talking about. Hey, you got to think, yeah, you know, you're, you're quoting me here, I think. Uh, you got to think, these, yeah, these guys probably could figure out where the stars are going to rise even that far in the future. Uh, well, if I said it that way, um, I didn't mean to say it that way. I meant to say it, it, the whole thing is this accuracy question. I don't know how accurate they were. I, I'm doubtful, but you know, since we think maybe not, I don't, I, I'm just this, this is a, this is a, a crucial issue. If you want to get that sunrise happening in that limited segment of sky, you've got to have pretty accurate uh, uh, precession rate. And did they have it? You gotta find out what she means yeah, I'm a follow by that my pick. Book. I'm gonna send what, it to you. What value does she assign to that cycle? Yeah, I'm gonna send that to you. Because uh, pick is not the same thing as hob, and hob is a 365 day year, and that's what we used uh, to get. Now, if she means something even more accurate, well, ooh, okay, now we're getting even uh, more interesting. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if she meant more accurate. Uh, how she backs it up, I don't know. But I gotta see that. I'm gonna send it to you. See, see if we can get. Uh, Barb McLeod and Van Stone's stuff as much as as much, as, a, as much of the original stuff as we can from McLeod and then from this. Does he change what she says, or does he report no, he, it? No, he just he's does he have did, does he have uh, does he reference that uh, that cite it? I mean, can, can we get the original we'll from find, McLeod? I will. I'm gonna get it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I want to see it. I wanna I'm see gonna get at it. it. I want to know exactly. Uh, yeah, I'll get at it. Yeah, no that's gonna be interesting. Do you remember offhand where she said it was happening, or he said she said it was happening? Yeah, like, no. that, that glyph shows up in Palenque, no, or it's oh, there. No. Or? It's very brief. I'll get it. I'll find out. Yeah, I know um, that she's, that's fascinating. I have to admit, that's fascinating. I get at it. Okay, uh, in other words, we got the thing is, how accurate were they? Right now, I'm not going to say they were as accurate as we are, but I don't know how, how we got to this stage of accuracy. Do you need telescopes or not? Uh, that's, that's one of the questions. You know, could they physically have done it without telescopes? And, uh, uh, in what viewing condition? Those are all relevant questions. Uh, okay. Okay, here. Every 400 years, you have to not put in a loop, you'll get that's what the growing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that makes it more accurate. I imagine they could do that. Uh, I, I guess if I said that, I, I, uh, I said, imagine they could do that rather than they did that. I'm saying, I guess I'm it's saying, possible. Uh, I mean, we came up, you know, the Gregorian calendar reformers did not have telescopes. They were 30 years before telescopes. And the calculations behind all that, that's when they instituted the calendar. But they had the knowledge about leap year value and all that, you know, probably. I don't know how long before that, maybe 100 or 200 years before that. It just took them politically a long time to get the calendar started, but I think, I'll bet you at least 100 years they, you know, before, maybe let's say 1500, maybe even 1400, uh, they probably had the figures, no telescopes, naked eye, and so I guess I said they could do it because other naked eye people did it. So uh, it's just, maybe they could, but let's find out if we can. And that's the whole the whole issue here. I'm. I'm uh, slow to say that they knew the uh, procession rate that accurately, but uh, I'm not so I'm not so doubtful about the uh, length of the year.
Edmondson and others are saying, well, yeah, we're not, we're not doubtful at all or whatever. I don't know where Edmondson gets it. I mean, we, we accept it one correlation or the other. And you get December 21st or December 23rd, and for reasons I don't quite understand, they can, either one can, can be a solstice depending on what I'm not sure. But you look at, if I can remember, when you send me the email, send, tell me to send you the uh, little chart I drew up of uh, authorities, the Vini and others, saying when uh, astronomically the season starts. There's, there's, a, there's a variation there. Especially for the for the autumn equinox, and there's some variation with the winter solstice too. Some say 21 or 22, and I think I don't know. Some even say 23. I'm not sure. Uh, so we'll see. Yeah, in the Gregorian calendar, astronomically, and I don't I don't know what kind of cycle is involved. How many years before it all starts over again? It can vary. The date of the solstice. It seems strange to me. It's like not supposed to happen. But Anyway, they don't agree among themselves, and I don't understand why. If you got them together in a room, they'd probably know exactly what they meant and, and be able to uh, say so. But in the books, anyway, they got different dates. Tell me to send you that. Okay. Okay. Uh, see if there's anything else. Yeah, that we really, yeah. How well do they know the rate of recession is key? Yes, we, we can know that. Let me get into this. This is interesting. That, that 311 pick thing, I want to know about that. These others are. are you know, words left out and so on. Now, what about this here now? Okay, now this one here uh, says, uh, Winter Solstice is Prudence, uh, Prudence Rice quotes Victoria Bricker, uh, excuse me, what's this? Uh, as observing, the proper season alignment of the Yucatecan solar calendar month names occurs when zero pup, first day of the first month of the year, is around the winter solstice. Okay. Um, hmm. Well, that may happen. Uh, I know. I know. I've read that article. I know. I have. In, uh, um, well, let me just. Say. I have. I have. I, I. There is a serious problem with Bricker's uh, placing of the beginning of the month, uh, rainy months, going by her interpretation of what they mean, uh, the rainy months and and other month names. I forget exactly which ones. Mock. Uh, is, is a major one. She thinks it means like the, the end of the rainy season. It could mean something really different. Um, so that would affect by maybe four to six weeks where where it, it starts, and therefore a few you know a few score a year uh, when they were lined up the month names and the actual seasonal events they were supposedly naming or reporting. The, um, the year that supposedly happens depends, of course, on how you interpret it interpret all the month names and how close, how solid or stable a tie you can assign to some of those meanings. Um, I did that with the month names for my dissertation um, and I, I get a different, you know, four, six, eight weeks different than Bricker because of how, you inter how she interprets uh, a couple month names and how I interpret them. Uh, the problem is in the, in the rainy season, starts in early May, goes on for a few weeks, and then there's this stop. It stops raining for about two or three weeks every year, real, real regularly, and then it starts up again. And Bricker's interpretation kind of glosses over that, and that makes a big difference as to where you place uh, the beginning of the year, and therefore whether zero pup uh, occurs on the winter solstice or not by you know, four to six weeks. It's so interesting so you, about you can't, this. You can't hang on that, you know. You want to see it, but it may not be there. I'm not sure if it's this quote from Rice or this one. One of these uh, is actually she cites you. Who? Rice. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's well, cool. gets deeper in the issue of calculation. Winter Solstice saying other than suggest that many Tony Solstice there's a formal starting point. This one made had made in the sixth century B.C. when the rainy season months coincided correlated with the seasons. Yeah, the 500 sounds too early, but. We don't know when they actually had all this stuff put down. We just know when they, you know, when the first date happens to survive, I think, is what Edmondson is basing us on. And that's what, one big question I have, you know, what does he base his stuff on? Because I don't, I don't remember, does he, does he um, say it started in common LU, three or four hundred BC or so, and it's a long count? Or is he just assuming it's a long count because we, we have long counts from uh, 100 or 200 years later? That's, that's pretty important. 
might be assuming that all Mesoamericans have a long kind. And that, you know, that, that originally, whoever had a calendar, it was a long count calendar. And, and even if we have only a day name or month name, uh, we can assume it was a long count calendar. And we go forward a couple hundred years and just project backwards, and then we see when did, when's the whole thing going to end. And uh, okay, it's like, you know, okay. I, you know, some things Edmondson does that I don't understand. And, I'm sure he's right number one, but um, I guess what that means is okay. We have we're, we're we're pretty damn sure about the Mayan long count. It's correlation with our calendar. It's only two days off from one correlation to another, um, and so that would mean it would either be either be 21st or 23rd. I think that's the difference. Um, uh, the question is, what? Why does he say coming out? You had the right value at that, that early date. I don't, I don't understand why he says that. I don't think there's a long count found at Common LU, and so why does he say they they fit into it? So, I mean, you can project it backwards and, uh, da, 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 and have a certain day name or month name and match it with something you find, a day name only or a month name only or something, and say, well, it could be in here and here. But any day name or month name, any day name is with 260 days, it repeats again. Every, any month name is, you know, a 365 repeat. And the two of them together, every 52 years, they repeat. And so I'm wondering, I'm not real sure. I'm going to see if I can remember to go home and look at that and yeah, see so what so it's based on because... It's so complex. Man. That is, uh, you know, that's a question as to why. Anyway, uh, uh, maybe whether Kamenov, you found it in what year, doesn't matter. The Maya got it from the, made it themselves, or somebody else got it. The big thing is it ends on 21st December, and that's why we're all upset and interested and wondering whoever came up with it, uh, assuming that nobody revised it, you know, it was really accurate. And if they really wanted it to end on a, on a solstice, and that's a big if as well. Let's see if I got anything else. Are you running out of time? We gotta go? Oh, uh, no. Okay. Now, where, okay. Now this is very strange. I think this is. I, I got to see this because I don't understand. It. Uh, another important thing is to consider. Okay, here's this place in Oaxaca, an early example of public architecture: large, clear, linear area, roughly, roughly oriented towards the southeast on winter solstice sunrise. Roughly, is that good enough? Uh, which may be a ball court. Okay, the site dates five to four thousand B.C. I mean, that's really early for any um, ball court or public architecture thing so I, I'm, I'm doubtful about the date but you're pretty clear you're pretty sure that's what she says yeah that's what she and says. she's she's not saying or according to what I want to believe this is the date I give it that's the date the excavators give it yeah that's yeah that's you know I want to check that but probably that's what what, what, what you mean I guess and uh, and I guess the real question would be okay what does the whole site date to that or is that the date for the ball court feature hmm. since the site dates to does that tell us when the ball court was made? Because that's what we're talking about. And then again, even if it is that old, you know, it says it's roughly aligned, which means, well, how accurate do you want to be here? So if it's roughly aligned, you can get away with a lot of stuff, and maybe it doesn't worth, it may not even be merit consideration. Yeah, where'd you get this figure, 4,000? Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, 10, 400 year cycles, what is that about? Timeline of mathematics, strong prediction, and observation that would take at least. I'm not sure. Ten, because that's 400, been, well, what's a 400-year cycle? That's Why just is that what, in there? That's what you said. We were talking. We were just talking about from your interview, uh, the material about like how long, how, how long it would take them to, to figure out the leap year. And I can understand. Oh, that, that 400-year cycle. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Now yes. I know what you're talking about. Okay. Yes. Yeah, okay. Saying, this is you know, kind of this is pretty iffy here because roughly oriented and site versus ball court feature. You know, which one? How old is it? We're talking about the ball court feature. How old is that, and can we even really tell? Uh, are we sure it's there from the very beginning of the site, or could it be you know, 500 years, 1,000 years later? The site started out as a little village or something, uh, 5,000 and 2,000 BC, you know, uh, and they built the ball court. Or and it's like Mesoamerica doesn't have any ball courts or anything until uh, like 1,000 BC, and that's only the old X, and they're far away. And, uh, Maybe, maybe, okay, uh, 700 or 500 BC. Yeah, a lot of people are doing ball courts and architecture and stuff. Yeah. 
but it's like four or five thousand. You got architecture of any kind beyond the hovels, little huts. You know, it's, it's kind of unusual. Yeah. So I guess you have to figure out exactly what she's talking about there. Um, I'm not sure what this means. One arrangement of three, seven, south, south, north, and view from the mountain. Oh, that's cool. This is this is good. Where they actually have these three steel and they're doing it. This is one of them did do the do the other three. Southernmost is the winter solstice. Do the other the other do the other two marks uh, like uh, like uh, equinox and, and summer solstice? So. Oh, okay, cool. But that's certainly important. Uh, Hey, I believe I don't know what the reverse count means. Does it mean that the calendar is counting backwards or counting up to creation? That it was put in place with the end date being in mind. Oh, okay. And that they believe whether they could could or whether they knew procession or not. Just don't know the value, but just that it. And I thought you said Divini. Oh no. Okay. Yeah, Vini. Yes, but she says that she didn't think they had it worked out to the classic period. To the classic period, which is okay, good ways before. Classic period would be like you know 300 plus or four or 500, and that would be oh four or 500 years before coming out. You supposedly knew the accuracy of the year, and then how far before that? Uh, okay. Okay. Well, nothing. I forgot the Y there, but they did. New ear. <laughs> new oh, ear. new ear, huh? Yeah. Okay. This is... Okay. 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 Yeah. My work doesn't work, doesn't work for it. Not what I want to be, receive attention for. It. This, this, this is belief. This is belief, or is it? This belief is not what I'd like to raise awareness about or receive attention for. Yeah, this is, this belief I guess this, is not. Yeah. This is probably yeah. this crap is there. Okay. <laughs> uh, what was raised awareness? I don't know. Uh, from the contradictions. Yeah, this is a uh, okay. For, uh, in you don't say you say among professional scholars. Mm -hmm. And okay, you got to be you know you're treading on ice when you say very clear contradictions among esteemed scholars. You, know? yeah. you got to lay it out like this. But you got to you got to be a bit more detailed, or at yeah. least the other. you got to have a lot of you know stuff, stuff back, backing up there. Vase, there are, there might be I think there might be several vases. Well, you're talking about vase of the seven and nine gods. Yeah, there 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 is a vase with nine. I think there's one with thirteen. There may be several with nine and several with seven. I well, think. It, those, from what from what Stone was saying, seven the one, the vases of the seven and nine gods are the ones with the creation text. Yeah, no, I'm just saying there may be several. Two or three versions of each seven oh, and nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what you do is you go to Famsey and you go to the Kerr K E R R archive. Of, uh, he's got hundreds and hundreds of photos of uh, you know, rollout uh, color that you can download. You know, just just copy them yourself uh, of, of nine vases. And you look up, you know, uh, seven vases. You know, God uh, um, vase of the seven gods, or vase of the nine gods, or whatever, and you'll You'll find out what variants there are. These are pretty you know, uh, important and popular topics to where he's got a lot of, he's got a number of the vases there. I mean, there's the very famous one, it's all black and then the figures are white. Uh, that's a good one. I always wonder, you know, what seven is that the sun, moon, and the five visible planets? I, I'd like it to be. <laughs> but anyway, and the nine gods, that would be like the underworld. But anyhow, okay. I got to read that Van Stone thing. I got to get that because he's he's no dummy. He knows glyphs, and uh, it's interesting. I, I looked at a couple. I mean, I looked at him when you showed me the thing, and I talking about you know Balon Octe or Yokte and, and coming down from the sky or something. And some parallels suggest you know there's the preposition ta, which from or to, depending on kind of verb you use, and then there's the in one version, I think there's a sky as this preserved. So it's like, okay, that's not like fun. Oh, like, wow. You know, anyway, something we can do. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, we need to have, you know, yeah. the name of, you know, it has a title and all that, and so just no put, put that in there. Uh, and the rest is all just you know, a little 
and stuff. But uh, okay, cool. Um, that's for the accuracy. You know, that's the major issues for the class. Okay. Um, I, uh, it's like I, you know, I would cut back on the the charming and uh, if you're doing, you know, the, if you're gonna, I guess you know the impersonal and you know, I like it, but uh, it's not professional. It's not going to admit. So you have to, you know, you can't put your, you know, this is my opinion and don't judge a book by its fire and I don't believe in fire and brimstone, you know, that kind of stuff you can't put in there. It's got to be just the issue and just, right. the, just the facts. It's got to be, you know, reserved and learned. And, Sometimes they got to do that you know, just, just to formal. get into it's the It's got to be formal, but this is okay for you and me. Yeah. Um, probably I understand a little better. better pretty much laid, I pretty much laid it out. Right, or as um, yeah, you, well, the, yeah. The, this is this is really helpful to say, you know, what just are the really important issues, and now the thing is, of course, to um, you know what is involved in each of these, mm -hmm. and could it have been done, and why not, or and who says yes, and who says no, and how come? And that's good, and it has to be just clarified. Uh, I think a bit, but we we I think covered what you have to know about this, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what, what you have to know. Uh, the, the very first one that it's ending on a winter solstice that far after supposedly they figured it out is, you know, of course, that's the whole argument there, you know, like, there's no doubt the long count does end at that time if you take the, I guess it's, it's probably, of the two correlations, it's probably the more accurate, the more favored one. I can't be sure of that. Uh, let's say that's the, that's the case. Uh, is there any reason to think they wanted it to end on a solstice and therefore they said all the time? Therefore, they were that accurate. That they could be accurate, that accurate with the year, uh, I don't see why not. And why would they choose the solstice? That's a question. I'm not sure we can ever prove that they wanted it to end on a solstice or understand completely why, because so much is, you know, they're all dead and an awful lot of the material, I guess, is not a, alive anymore or it's there and we don't understand it, we don't see it. Myths and so on. I guess it, you know, if you had a, a whole bunch of time on your hands, you could, you know, look through all the myths about some winter solstice and see if they tell you anything. Um, but that's the question: is why would they? You know, did they want it to happen? Then? And did they really know it back that far back? Did they have that accuracy? I mean, why did it take us so long to get that accurate? And why should we think? Well, as far as we know, the Egyptians were only like, you know, at 0.25. And you've got to be more accurate than that. And I don't know who got that accurate and when. And, you know, it's just a matter of uh, living in relatively uh, prosperous and undisturbed times that people have, there's a, there's a small class of people who have the leisure uh, and the, the smarts to look at this long enough to figure out the real accuracy, or is it something you know, real early on, or you know, why should it, why shouldn't it be possible to happen earlier than than, than we got to it? Uh, I have no real reason to think that, that we, under ideal conditions you couldn't have done it earlier. Uh, I'm just surprised that, uh, well, as far as I know, the Egyptians who were really very much into this did not get that accuracy for a long. Uh, they they never got it, as far as I know. And why not? Did the Babylonians get it right? And we just, uh, we just thought, you know, it's there, and, and, you know, it's buried. You know, experts know that they had it, and I, I don't know if the Babylonians had that accuracy or not. I'm pretty sure the Egyptians did not. Um, and they were doing intense sky watching for a long time, so why didn't they get it early on? Or did they, and I just don't know. Uh, I know the Julian calendar, um, supposedly a Greek-Egyptian guy, Sosogenes, you know, guided him in making up the calendar value, and he, did, he gave the 0.25 thing. Which makes you think, okay, 46 BC, they still didn't know that it was in need of, uh, of a death. It still had to be more accurate than that. Uh, why didn't they get it? And does it mean, you know, we didn't have telescopes, so what's the difference? Why didn't they get it? And the relevance is, well, okay, if the Egyptians couldn't get it, could the Maya have gotten it? Is there any real difference between uh, their, their conditions, uh, viewing conditions, or uh, it's hard to say what happened? What's going on with the Maya and, and, and or their, or their, their predecessors, Olmecs or whoever, who figured out how long the calendar year really ought to be? And if we accept that they knew it that well, that far back, um, 
it, it's possible, but, or, or is it maybe not possible given the Egyptian things? Yeah, those are questions like, the fascinating question, but it's hard. I, 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 it takes a lot of digging. It might be fun to dig it up and find out why, because people are going to say, wait a minute, wait a minute, the Egyptians were really good astronomers and they didn't get it, so why are you saying that they, these people over here got it? You know what? We I, don't know anything makes, really as much about them as we know about the look, Egyptians. It makes me want to look in, um, it makes me want to check out, um, Jenkins' most recent publication is The Galactic Alignment, which is his follow up to Cosmogenesis. Cosmogenesis focuses particularly on Mesoamerica. And oh. my, Cosmogenesis? And, yeah, Cosmogenesis is all about Mesoamerica, but Galactic Alignment actually looks at the Babylonians, the Egyptians, the Indians. Oh, that would be interesting. And it yeah. talks about all their. Oh, okay. Uh, and so I'd like to see if he, if he found see, that there's I, some I other values. Wrong, you know, maybe some Egyptians knew the value and they just didn't, people just didn't accept it. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm really fascinated. I wouldn't be surprised about the Babylonians either if they knew the real value. And I can't see why people didn't know the real value earlier on. And that may be, you know, I'm just ignorant. You know, maybe it takes some really special viewing conditions, you know, to get it right. I'm really, that accurate anyway. I'm really fascinated with uh, the Egyptians. And uh, I have a couple of theories and a couple of thoughts about just some basic, very basic Egyptian concepts and its relation to Western history uh -huh. and its emergence. They kind of, man, we can build, start a whole another conversation, basically. But mm. one of the things particularly I've, I've, I've always found, and, and I'm interested to talk to you about this because you teach world religion and, you know. Okay, I know you. something about the Egyptians, but a little bit probably not enough to address what you want to know. But well, I'll, what I'll I, try. Particularly what but I do know from my understanding about the Egyptians that. is that one, Nile Valley, one, I know there's controversial, there's controversial people trying to push back. Egyptian culture and oh, the, the dating of the Sphinx. Yes, I've heard of that. Okay, I've heard of that. They want to put it back like ten thousand years. Exactly, like ten ago, to so. twelve thousand BC. They want yeah, to put the Sphinx. Yeah, they want to put it way back there. And you know, okay. And, and that is because of procession. It's because of water erosion on the Sphinx. It's because of procession, and it's because of the Sphinx itself and its association with the constellation Leo, and that's when Leo was rising. Okay. okay. So there's a whole bunch of different stuff to that. But irregardless, irrespective of whether or not we can push the Sphinx back that far, the traditional Egyptologists are putting the beginning of Nile River uh, civilization in up to 10,000 B.C., and that from like 8,500 to 6,000 BC is like the beginnings of cultivation in the Nile Valley, uh, our agriculture and all that sort of stuff. Okay. And the begin the first pyramids started around 50, the attempts at pyramid building started around 5,500 BC. Oh, that's way different. Yeah, that's way, that's way earlier. Um, um, and, and they started, but all, I know that Giza, this is to me so fascinating. If Giza is dated to anywhere between 21, 2200, and 2500 B.C.? Yeah, it's, it's like 25, 2700. 25, 2700 B.C. Those three big ones are like in the, in the, in the 2500s. Well, to me, it's just so and fascinating. There are about 100 other ones, 100 years or so on either side of that. How much, how much, uh, our, how much of our language, and particularly in our Ju the Judeo-Christian pantheon of language, is, comes out of Egypt? Like, really? Yeah, it, well, you can think about this. Let's do this. Let's go to the Old Testament. Okay? Let's go to the Old Testament. Let's open it up. And you have Adam and Eve. You have the population. Da, 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 da. Then you have a flood. And you have Noah. And Noah's three sons. Okay? Noah's three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japhet. Ham is the one that apparently seen Noah naked. And so Noah cursed his sons, Canaan, to be a slave of slaves to his brothers. So Ham... One of Noah's sons, Ham, had four sons. Cush put Egypt in Canaan. Canaan was cursed because Noah, I mean, because Ham seen Noah naked. Mm -hmm. But Canaan, as well as Cush, was Eastern Africa. The and then Egypt. Okay, so he has a son named Egypt. But because Ham's cursed and is associated with Afro-Asiatic people, there is no delving into the histories of the lineage of Ham and the, the Canaanites, the Cush the kingdoms, the Egyptians, and uh, put put Cush, Egypt, Canaan. There's no, there's no explora exploration and or there's no uh, narrative, right? So the narrative goes from Shem. 
it goes from Shem and then the twelve tribes and then Abram, Abraham, Abraham. Okay. okay, Abraham traveling to Egypt. So you, next thing you know, Abram, in two chapters later, goes to Egypt and the whole civilization is already intact. There's a Pharaoh there. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, so yeah, you, you yeah. see where there's a symbol for the beginning of the culture, and then you have the whole culture in place with actually no, no elaboration on the development of one of the oldest Grand West civilizations. You see That's what I'm right. saying? The Bible says just about nothing about Egypt. Exactly. Except know, for about, demonization. About its, about its, develop, about its development. Yeah. Well, and, and what happened no, is after, after Very, Abraham, yeah. after Abraham, and then you have the 12 tribes actually come after Abraham, and then you have, they end up, Joseph sold the slave, slave Joseph, his brother. Yeah, they, they lived there, I think, what did you say, three to four hundred years? And gives, then, gives a figure. And, okay. and that's what separates the, the Hebrews from the Israelites. The, that whole one group stayed in the land of the Hebrews and one oh, group yes. went to Egypt. Okay. And then you have later, you have Moses and Aaron in the Exodus, right? right. Okay, now archaeologists and historians put the Exodus during the New Kingdom, during the 18th Dynasty, circa Ramses. Or Ramses II. In the 1200s. Yeah. Exactly, 1200. So what you see here is from the Exodus, Exodus is the third book of the Bible, uh, I mean the second book of the Bible, just the Exodus Leviticus. The second book of the Bible, you have the beginning of the demonization in of Egypt, the demonization of Egypt in the biblical canon. And because the bondage under Pharaoh was so bad, and you know, et cetera, et cetera. That happened in 1 to 1200 BC. And if Giza was built in 2500 BC, you're talking about 1300 years plus or minus of dynastic lineage. And also of, you know, where the civilization was once at its peak during Giza in 2500 BC, that far back was at its peak. Yeah. And then you could see where there would be, you know, there would be political upheavals, there would be lo loss of certain technologies through war and da 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 da, -da and infighting and all that. And then you have the development of Judeo Christianity, and you have all these concepts that are taken from Egypt and, and put in the, that are found in the Middle East and found in all through the Mediterranean. Like the whole, the original resurrection and the original Trinity. Is in Egypt, you know, Osiris, Trinity? Isis, and Horus. Osiris, Isis, I'm and Horus. about the Trinity. Yeah, the original Trinity is supposed to be Osiris, Isis, and Horus, uh, and that what happened was is the. Yeah, uh, but, but the problem is he had a brother, the, the, the big bad evil Seth, and just, uh, that makes four, not three, and it's like. Okay. Yeah, but. And it's, it's not, it's not, there are, I think there are several uh, Trinities, and, and then there's. Groups of nine and groups of seven in Egyptian lore, um, and uh, okay, if it's a group of three, how many groups of three are in that religion? I think there are several different periods, one or two, and then other periods, all three or four groups of threes are revered, but there are recognized groups of threes, several of them at one time. Uh, it's like it's so. It's not like we can say. Okay, here's, with any convincing uh, force that you know, any, a group of three or just the idea of a group of three is what gave us the, the Christian trinity. Uh, especially when you look at what the, you know, the Egyptian, the various Egyptian trinities are like. They're male and female and a, and a child, usually a male child. And then you look at the, the, uh, the Christian trinity, it's so weird and so different. And uh, you know, there's no Mary in there. She's not part of the trinity. She's revered, but she's not, she's not God. This is about me. Yeah. Yeah. Three they persons, distinct out. persons, and they're all equally God, and yet there's only one God, even though there are three persons. You know, it's like real hard to even grasp, you know? You know, it would be like kind of, well, so what? Three and three, but there's a huge difference in the three and three. And it's like, and I, I really don't, I don't know where they got that idea of the Trinity from. I, I did see something fascinating, but probably altogether wrong. There is a, uh, uh, in, is it, what is it? Is a uh, Buddhism. There's a there's a form of Buddhism. There are two major forms of Buddhism or schools mm -hmm. or whatever. One is uh, Theravada, which says it's it's more faithful to the original doctrine of the Buddha, and then there's the Mahayana, which came much yeah. later. But uh, I think the first one is Theravada. 
and uh, say by five or six, uh, four, four or five or so, or 300 BC, it was fairly well established um, and uh, beaten out most rivals. Uh, and these are the guys who come up with a very strange tradition. I think it's these guys. It might be the other one because the other one was still before Christ at this point, before Christianity. Uh, one of the two schools come up with an idea of that Buddha, this original teacher, uh, has three bodies, three different basic forms. That sounds really interesting to me. That's <laughs> uh, called the, the doctrine of the, the, the Trigya or Trikaya or something. But one is the historic real life on this earth, Siddhartha, Gautama, Buddha, got you achieved enlightenment and, and left the palace and all this. And then there are two others on different planes, but they're supposed to be other forms or persons of Buddha. It's like, yeah, Sam, is it just possible that some Christians got the idea from there? And well, I knew this would lead us to a whole nother. Anyway, so. Yeah, it, it's, it, it is so deep, but I'm really fascinated. And I, and I don't know if, like, if, you, if you've ever seen, like, the, like, the, um, like there's just a lot of I've read a lot of stuff of where they're trying you know they they show where uh, Egyptian the concept of Osiris and Isis fed into the Mediterranean Middle Eastern world and where different religions picked up some of these concepts and how Dionysus has that in Greece has yes. the attributes of Osiris and okay. per, uh, the what's the guy in Persia? Um, Mithras. Oh, 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 Mithras. Mithras. And, oh, Mithras. Yeah. And Mithras. Yeah.